Our final speaker for this opening session is Mr. Ken Guthrie. Ken is the Director of Sustainable Energy Transformation, a specialist consulting service that undertakes activities that aim to transform markets to support greater use of sustainable energy. He is Chair of the International Energy Agency's Solar Heating and Cooling Program and Chairman of the ISO Standards Committee on Solar Energy. Until August 2012, Ken was the General Manager, Sustainable Environs in Sustainability, Victoria, Australia, where he provided advice across the Victorian government regarding market and regulatory programs to support the deployment of sustainable energy technologies. He is currently providing strategic support for innovative building energy efficiency computer software at CSIRO, the Australian Scientific Research Organization. Please welcome Ken Guthrie. Thanks very much, Charles, and uh, thank you so much for the invitation uh, here. It's uh, great to see such a good conference and uh, it certainly uh, is a great example of the positive role played by Gord in the, uh, in the area. Think green, act clean. To tackle the great challenge that we have in humanity, um, we need to think green and act clean. And to do this, we must understand and engage with thought leaders and those in the forefront of, forefront of, of transforming our systems to become more sustainable. In short, we must learn together and collaborate on action. What I'm going to talk about this afternoon is just two opportunities for collaboration that we have internationally. Um, one, to research and promote technological advances in clean energy, the International Energy Agency Solar Heating and Cooling Program, and the second, that provides standards for solar equipment that are internationally relevant to all regions, that's ISO TC 180. So what I'll cover is really the importance of heating and cooling as part of the whole energy process and I'll talk about the International Energy Agency, solar heating and cooling and uh, the program, the structures and the relationships there, and most importantly, the activities. And then with ISO TC 180, solar energy, the scope, the membership, the activities that are happening there. And I'll also mention briefly solar electricity standards. So my aim of this presentation is that you, industry researchers and agencies from across the region, can know what's happening in these programs, can get further involved in current projects, and also can suggest and participate in future engagements. First of all, heat and electricity and transport. We've talked about those briefly early this morning, but uh, I think one thing that most people don't seem to understand is that about 50% of the energy that's used worldwide is consumed as heat or as, as cooling, heating and cooling, where the, uh, the, the uh, delivery is a change of temperature. About a quarter to a third is as transport and only about one-fifth is electricity. Many of our conversations are dominated by electricity, but it's really the end use of heat that's important. And then if we look at the developments in the new renewable technologies which are beginning to take place more dramatically, we see from, from one of the IEA solar heating and cooling document, documents here, Solar Heat Worldwide, that solar thermal heat provides a substantial amount of energy and a substantial capacity. It's, um, it's one of the highest capacities available um, at the end of last year. So heat is important. Heat is, um, is uh, delivering a lot, of, a lot at the moment. When some background to the IEA solar heating and cooling program. Many of you have heard of the IEA, the International Energy Agency in Paris, and that's the secretariat that sits above um, all the work that we do. 
However, um, it, has a, it, it has a number of technology collaboration programs that fur sit further down the tree where, um, that are reasonably autonomous and where the work um, takes place. So we can see solar heating and cooling sits under the Renewable Energy Working Party, which reports to um, the, com the Committee for Energy Research and Technology. And we can see other, other um, organisations there. There's uh, photovoltaic power systems and solar power and chemical energy systems also sit in the Renewable Energy Working Party. But there's the end use part. The, the energy efficiency area is there with, uh, for energy in buildings and communities and energy conservation through energy storage. And we at Solar Heating and Cooling work with all those groups uh, to make sure that our work is well integrated and, um, and gets the best outcome. Uh, the program that I'm talking about here is there's 21 countries and five organisational members. We run around about 10 at any particular time collaborative research projects that run for three to five years. And we cover solar heating and cooling technologies for residential, commercial, industrial and agricultural end uses. We also work on capacity building projects that are relevant to all solar technology. So some of our capacity building projects are also um, done jointly with the photovoltaic or the, uh, the solar power and chemical energy systems people because um, it's the same information that's relevant to all. And we do market information, as I showed you before, the work on, um, on uh, solar heat worldwide that we've uh, delivered and other projects that support global market uh, deployment. In our collaborative tasks that we have uh, undertaken so far in the last few years, we've had a total of about 600 researchers formally participating and giving their expertise across those projects. About a quarter of those are from industry. So it's not just researchers, it's really, um, we're trying to ground it in, in real commercial outcomes. And we look at the informal engagement, that's the people attending workshops and other activities that are taken there. That's uh, about 1,700, about a third of those are from industry as well. And if you want to get some more information, you can see our website there at the bottom. So the tasks that we're undertaking um, and I'm looking really, we're halfway through our strategic plan from 2014 to 2018. So what I'm looking here is the things that we've done over the past few years and we will, we will be continuing to deliver over the next few years. We have um, done work on materials for new collectors and materials for compact uh, energy storage. We've um, looked at large systems and solar renovations and um, and solar heat for industrial processes. And we've they've, they've, all those projects have been completed in the last few years, but resource assessment and forecasting is still going, it's almost complete. And Dr. David Rene will be talking about that tomorrow. So the ones I've highlighted in, uh, in yellow are ones that will be discussed at this, um, at this conference. And then we look at the, the further ones that, we've, that we've, we're working on at the moment. Um, we're looking at advanced lighting systems and Jan de Boer will talk about those tomorrow. Solar energy in, in, um, and urban planning. Professor Maria Wall will talk about that. Um, and solar heating and cooling. Daniel Munier will talk about the solar cooling systems. And uh, Michael Cole will talk this afternoon on price reductions for solar thermal systems because it's important that we're getting price reductions down so that we um, are making... Uh, uh, much more cost-effective um, opportunities. And uh, international standards for global certification, I'll talk about, we've got a task that covers that and I'll talk about that a little bit as a second part of my presentation. And then we have the other activities. One of our aims is to be the prime source of quality information on solar heating and cooling internationally. And so we work with, with uh, we gather data and I've mentioned solar heat worldwide and Verna Weiss will talk about that tomorrow and give you some of the outlines of what's what's happening around the world with solar heating technologies and we're also working with Solar Thermal World to work with them to get our information out. It's no good us having the best information if we don't get it out and uh, Babel Epp will talk about the work that's done at solarthermalworld.org tomorrow 
Um, so we're collaborating and getting that information out. Now the second part of the talk is about the international standards work that's done under ISO TC 180. We have, um, and this is where we're really trying to produce standards that are going to be relevant internationally, not just to one particular region, but some things that are relevant across the world. Um, we have uh, ISO TC 180, and it has been around since the early 80s, uh, and its scope is standardisation in the field of solar energy utilisation in space and water heating, cooling, industrial process heating, and air conditioning. So it mirrors the work of, uh, I, of IEA, solar heating and cooling. It doesn't cover photovoltaics or other electricity um, systems, and I'll talk about a little bit about those committees a bit later. Participating in ISO TC 180, we have 28 participating countries and 40 observing countries, and you can see the participating countries are shown there in the blue and the observing countries in yellow. And if we want to have a look at and a bit more about this particular region, we can see there's a lot of countries that are participating and a number of countries that are observing as well. So we are doing our best to produce standards that are relevant to this region as well as the rest of the world. Our structure, we have, um, we have a, a number, two working groups and uh, two subcommittees, um, and they look at um, climate measurement and data in the subcommittees and system performance and reliability and durability. Some of the standards we are administering there I won't go into because I don't think we have a great amount of time at this stage. But w one of our major current projects is the, which is now in final draft international standard is a, an update of ISO 9806 and solar thermal collectors and test methods. It was published in 2013. It's now almost been completely revised. Um, and uh, the task 57 of ISO, uh, of IEA solar heating and cooling is on international standards and global certification. And it is promoting that, this standard, as the basis for uh, global certification of solar collectors so that when uh, things are traded internationally, and when people are buying it, they understand that the certification system means something and it's relevant worldwide. And it covers not only flat plate collectors, but also evacuated tube collectors and, and also the, the compound, the parabolic trough collectors that are used in, uh, such as, as the one that's produced by Glass Point for, uh, for the enhanced oil recovery system in, uh, in Oman. And we have solar hot water uh, system performance standards, which covers a number of different uh, ways of, of doing that. Uh, and down the bottom, we see that outdoor testing and then computer simulation is one that's, that's widely used across the world at the moment, and that um, will be further enhanced. So um, I mentioned that we don't cover photovoltaics or solar electricity. Solar electricity is covered under, not under ISO, but under the International Electrotechnical Commission. And there are two uh, technical committees there that are important. One TC82, which looks at photovoltaics power systems, and one uh, TC117 looks at solar thermal electricity plants. And you can see the scopes here. The scope of their work is, 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 is quite, uh, quite narrow, but we do work together on them, with them on a number of things. So, uh, we've worked together with TC117 on the new ISO 9806 to ensure that the, the sort of collectors that they use for the solar thermoelectric plants are covered under that because they can be producing heat as well as producing heat to be producing electricity. Now, I've covered there a very brief overview of what we're doing. If you um, and I've mentioned a number of things that will be said at this conference. If you want to delve even deeper, then we'll have a conference coming up in one year's time, which will be close by in Abu Dhabi. Uh, and uh, we'll be working not only on solar heating and cooling for industry and buildings, but also we're, we're doing it jointly with the International Solar Energy Society. So they'll cover the rest of the solar technology. So for the one for the, at the one event, you'll be able to go into the depths of solar heating and cooling, but also look at what's happening in other technologies. So I hope you'll be able to attend that. So thank you very much. <laughs>